one on BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. It's round five of the 2024 Formula One World Championship and it's a return for the first time in five years for the Chinese Grand Prix. Just about an hour outside of the city, the sport is back at the Shanghai International Circuit. It's also the first of six sprint events this year. A slightly rejigged weekend format. Yesterday, we had one hour of practice followed by qualifying for this morning's sprint race, which is about to get underway. Alongside myself, Harry Benjamin, guiding you through all the coverage is McLaren. And Formula E driver Sam Bird and BBC F1 correspondent Andrew Benton. Sam, welcome to the booth. Um, chaotic rain affected Quali yesterday. We've only had one hour of practice. It's still a, a step into the unknown for all the drivers, isn't it? Absolutely. This is, I mean, it's very important practice with points. <laughs> on, on the cards today we were we were just speaking off air what do, will they do for tires we're not entirely sure what compounds people will be taking obviously very soon we'll find out but do they take a hard or do they take a medium Andrew, this is uh, essentially an extended long run corner. Well, very important practice with points. That's, that's <laughs> going to be the new billing for the sprint on all Formula One's uh, <laughs> promotions, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But I think he's got it absolutely right. That's exactly what it is. It's, it doesn't really, there's a few points at hand. The drivers don't really care that much about it. Okay, it's a race, not a practice session. But anyway, let's pick it up. Uh, Landon Norris is on pole. It was an exciting qualifying session. It's, it's a great. Uh, front of the grid Norris Hamilton Alonso Verstappen um, I mean look we all expect Verstappen will probably win it because he wins all the time these days doesn't he but um, there's at least some jeopardy in this one because fourth from fourth on the grid uh, uncertain tyre choices I think it won't be easy to make one set of tyres last to the end of this sprint even though it's only 19 laps so um, Norris has a chance uh, Hamilton probably doesn't because the Mercedes is looking pretty poor around Shanghai Alonso maybe might be able to get a better start because he's on the right side of the grid. Let's see. It certainly will be an interesting one. Yesterday's uh, sprint quality was probably one of the most exciting sessions of the year. Andrew gave uh, a little bit of background as to what we're about to expect. 19 laps ahead of us. It's essentially a 100-kilometer dash there or thereabouts. And points awarded to the top eight. Eight points for the win and one point all the way down uh, to eighth spot. No mandatory pit stops in this, so it really is a sprint to the finish. Uh, let's just run you through how the drivers and the constructors championship looks after four races this season it's max verstappen with three grand prix wins to his name has 77 points 13 clear of his teammate sergio perez then it's charles leclerc carlos Sainz, and lando norris the top five over in the constructors championship is red bull who lead the way 141 points to their name they're 21 clear of the next best ferrari then it's mclaren mercedes aston martin the top five rb currently leading the way in that second half of the pack in front of haas who are in seventh ahead of Williams, Sauber and Alpine, the bottom three teams yet to get off the mark. I mean, Sam, it was so exciting yesterday because it felt like the rain and, and the lack of grip gave it a real even footing. We didn't know what was going to happen. At one point, Hamilton was on a sprint pole. Then Norris had his lap time reinstated and took it. Alonso was up in there as well. Verstappen starts down in fourth. But today, it is not raining. There is 0% chance of rain. Do you think Norris Hamilton stand any kind of chance of holding on to a, to a top three position? I think Lando Norris has a very good chance today. Um, of course, I, th I still think Max Verstappen is, is the favourite, but if Norris with the McLaren, with, the, with their, their running a slightly higher downforce package than what you'll see other teams running, because they understand that their car is a little bit draggy, isn't the best in low downforce configuration. So they thought, well, we'll make the best of a bad situation, run high downforce, which is our strong point. If, the, if they can break the DRS away from Hamilton, away from Alonso and Verstappen, they've got a chance today. Uh, it depends on Verstappen's start, depends on whether Verstappen can clear Alonso and Hamilton quickly. But I would say, uh, yeah, Lando's got a chance today. You're wondering about tyres earlier, Sam. Well, they have been revealed to us. Everybody on the grid is on the medium compounded tyre, with the exception of George Russell and the Mercedes, who's on the soft. Uh, I think that's... Oh, can, can you do 19 laps on the softs round here? Well, we'll find out. 
I suppose this is the time to, to give it a go and find out. It, it is essentially a, an extended practice session for somebody like Russell, who's down on 11. Yeah, he's thinking, I've got nothing to lose here. You know, he's had a bad qualifying. He's in 11th place. That's probably not unreflective of a Mercedes pace. You know, McLaren only just, sorry, Hamilton only just scraped through into Q3 uh, in ninth place. Not that much quicker than Russell. So uh, in the dry, the Mercedes was looking really poor yesterday. He's just thinking, I'll gain a couple of places off the line and see if I can hang on to them, which given a, the track's got a 1.4 kilometer long straight, isn't very likely, but he might as well try. Yeah, worth a gamble from P11 on the grid. Well, they've just set up then on the formation lap. Let's run you through how they line up for the first sprint race of the year. It's Lando Norris who will start from pole position. Alongside him will be the Mercedes Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton, Alonso is third, Verstappen signs the top five, Perez lines up in sixth ahead of Leclerc, Piastri is eighth, and it's the two Salvers of Bottas and the home hero Joe Guan Yu starts from tenth. Just outside it's Russell who starts on that soft compound attire in eleventh in front of the two Hasses of Magnussen and Hulkenberg, Ricardo and Stroll round out the top fifteen. Gasly and the Alpine is sixteenth ahead of his teammate Ocon, Albon is eighteenth, Sonoda and Sargent make up up the back row and the 20 drivers who are already making their way halfway around this just over 5.4 kilometer 3.3 mile track 16 turns seven to the left nine to the right sam you've driven this track uh, in sports cars over the last few years uh, what do you insights can you give us uh, for the shanghai international circuit well firstly I, I i always used to find this track really really tricky very very technical i always found it quite low on grip so it is a challenge. That's why I think tyre choice is going to be so critical today. Also, it's very easy to overheat that rear left tyre. Weaving left and right, trying to get heat into the tyres is Lando Norris, who is now making his way down that long 1.4 kilometre back straight before you get to the braking zone of the right-hander of turn 14 with the... Uh, the engineers watching on from the pit wall. Last minute information being fed back. A word, Sam, as well on uh, Zhou Guan Yu, the, the home hero who starts in 10th, looking to try and get uh, his first points on the board in any kind of race. How much does being at home kind of propel you forwards for a home race? Definitely spurs you on. Um, he's got hundreds of thousands of people in, in China supporting him, willing him on. Is he going to stay in the points or can he score a point? I think it's going to be extremely difficult, but you never know. You never know in this game. And it was uh, a great qualifying for both Salvers uh, who have had pit stop issues over the course of the beginning of this season. Thankfully, there are no pit stops in this sprint. So they'll be looking forward to that as they now peel on to the starting grid. Lando Norris already lining up on the left hand side which is where pole position will be it's a 336 meter run from pole to the turn one braking zone where you almost do a full 360 degrees as you peel in to the right hander before you then come back on yourself and up towards the crest of turn five which you take full throttle slight right hander and then into the braking zone of turn six, peeling up in the way. At the back of the grid, Logan Sargent, Yuki Sonoda will form up the final row. It's that mid-pack that we want to watch out for as well with the likes of Russell, who could be far starting on that soft compound of tyres. He's just ahead of the two Haas drivers. But we are just about set then for the first sprint race of the year. First of six will also be sprinting in Miami, Austria, Belgium, Austin, Sao Paulo and Qatar. But right now it is Shanghai which kicks things off. The green flag flies at the back of the pack on pole position. It's Lando Norris alongside him. It's the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. It's all lights to the lights and foot to the floor for the first sprint of the year. And it's an even start from the front row. Hamilton will have the inside line. Alonso tucks in behind. Verstappen keeps signs at bay for fourth. Hamilton on the inside through the right hander. Forces Norris out wide onto the runoff. Norris losing positions. Hamilton comes out of turn two in the lead. It's Alonso in second for Stafford in third and they make their way up through the gears onto the throttle towards the right hand crest above turn five into the first heavy braking zone of turn six Perez has a look down the inside of a Stafford as Sainz tries to hold around the outside but it's Hamilton who leads Lando's had an absolutely dreadful first sector he was trying to hold it around the outside of Lewis but just ran out of grip 
Norris now going round the outside of Charles Leclerc, coming through the right-hander of turn seven as it starts to concertina up as he tries to make up position. So Norris has fallen all the way down to seven. It's Hamilton, Alonso, Verstappen, Perez, signs the top five. Leclerc, Norris, Piastri, Bottas, Magnussen, the top ten. So Joe Guan Yu has lost the position as they now make their way through the long arcing right-handers of turn 12 and turn 13, which lead us on to that 1.4 kilometer back straight. The toe here, super important. DRS will be activated on the next lap. The rear wing will slide open. This is the sound of Carlos Sainz making his way round Verstappen into the braking zone, round the outside. Can he do it? Into the right-hander of turn 14. No, he cannot. Stays put for the time being. But coming towards them, the end of lap one of 19 for the Chinese sprint race. It's Hamilton who leads. Alonso, Verstappen, Sainz, Perez, Leclerc, Norris, Piastri, Joe, Magnussen now the top 10. Bottas, Russell, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Stroll the top 15. Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda, Albon, Sargent the top 20. And a clean start to this sprint. Track looks still very, very green. Everybody's tiptoeing around, trying to get a little bit of heat and, and, and temperature into those medium compound tyres. The track will grip up, but this track, as I said previously, has never given that much grip in these conditions. I don't think I've seen Formula 1 cars slide around quite so much on a first lap as that, Sam. Also, I thought it was interesting on lap one, Hamilton and Alonso at the front took very different lines through that long right-hander onto the back straight, where Alonso was very tight, Alonso, uh, Hamilton quite wide. What was going on there, Sam? That's a really interesting corner as we're watching a, a replay of the race start. Hamilton just gets a better initial phase of traction, which is why he was able to get down the inside. Lando tries to hold it round the outside and just runs out of grip two-thirds of the way through the corner and has, is forced off to the runoff. That long right-hander, Andrew, yeah, very tricky. It's almost like you can take all the lines you want and it'll give you the same kind of lap time. Really, really strange corner to drive. Every time I've driven it, I've thought, oh, I'll try something new here. And yeah, it's, it's never any quicker than any, any other line. That's the sound of Lando Norris on the initial getaway. It was a fairly even start, but Hamilton got the better and then had that inside line and just edged Norris to the outside. And Norris lost the rear. Lack of grip on that outside line and off into the runoff area he went. Uh, back onto the track action and Carlos Sainz is still going wheel to wheel with Max Verstappen in the battle for third. Verstappen's actually a couple of seconds back from Fernando Alonso. Sainz was trying trying it into turns one and two. Had to back back out of it as it narrows into the left-hander, but he has a little look again into the right-hander of turn six. Slight lock-up on the front right for signs, but Verstappen isn't carving his way through the field. No, we fully expected Max Verstappen to be probably right with Alonso or past Alonso and, and Hamilton now and sailing away into distance, but he's not having it his own way. Carlos Sainz is all over the back of Max Verstappen. What this is doing is allowing Alonso and Hamilton to control the pace and, and slightly break away, which... Uh, I mean, how cool would that be if we've got an Alonso-Hamilton fight for the win? What year is it? Here's Verstappen on the radio. Hey, what's on Catherine, Fred? Mode 8, please, Max. Mode 8. So that's Max Verstappen asking, why is my battery flat being told by his engineer? Mode 8, please. So are there some battery issues on board Verstappen's Red Bull? The gap between Alonso and Verstappen at the moment is just over 1.7 seconds. Uh, I'm imagining that Verstappen's other problem is tyre temperature. He was complaining yesterday in the wet about being unable to get his tyres up to temperature. One of the Red Bull's strengths is the way it looks after its tyres. That means it brings them up to temperature slower than the other cars generally. So on this grip plus circuit, it may be that it's taking him time right now in these early laps to get those tyres those operating properly, but that could pay dividends for him later in the race. 
lap four of 19 of the sprint race at the Shanghai International Circuit. It's Lewis Hamilton who leads by seven tenths of a second over Fernando Alonso. Verstappen is third. Signs Perez, the top five. Then comes Leclerc, Norris, Piastri, Joe, and George Russell in the Mercedes, who is now back up into the top ten. He initially lost two positions uh, a lap ago. Bottas and Magnussen getting through on him. He's just managed to get back in front of the Haas of Kevin Magnussen down the main straight, taking that inside line into the braking zone, or down the back straight into the right-hander of turn 14. So Russell now back up into the top 10. He's the only man out there on the soft compound attire. Everybody else is on the medium compound attire. There are only 19 laps in the sprint race. Only the top eight get points. It's eight for the win, currently going the way of Lewis Hamilton. And the final point at the moment is going to Oscar Piastri in eight for McLaren, who is just behind his teammate Lando Norris, who led away from pole but was edged out wide by Lewis Hamilton coming into turn one and dropped right through the field now trying to claw his way back up he's half a second behind the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc there's a nice battle developing there the other Ferrari battle between Sainz and the Red Bull of Verstappen was hotting up it has just faded ever so slightly in the last lap or so Sainz now outside of that DRS zone with 15 laps to go as we cross the line for lap 5 of 19. But out in front, Sam, it's pretty easy sailing for Lewis Hamilton right now. 1.3 seconds the gap. When was the last time we said it was pretty easy sailing for, for Lewis Hamilton? It's got to be a couple of years ago. But he's doing a very solid job. They, The, the gap now between Alonso Hamilton and Alonso Verstappen, they're, they're, they're all about one and a half seconds between each other. This track, as we've said before, is very, very tricky with regards to the grip levels. Um, everybody looks to be struggling, almost tiptoeing around this circuit in comparison to other places that we go to. But right now, Alonso and Hamilton are finding grip that other people aren't. Absolutely, yeah, it is a track that has not really been raced on in the last five years. Last time Formula One was here was in 2019 indeed. The top two, well, Lewis Hamilton back then was a six-time world champion and Fernando Alonso uh, was retired back then, the last time we were racing here. And this time now they are leading the way in this sprint race. Lewis Hamilton leads a sprint race for the first time ever. He actually hasn't won uh, a sprint race so far since they've been introduced on course to try and hold that position. 1.3 seconds the gap. Verstappen a further 1. 0.3 seconds back from Alonso. Signs is a little bit under pressure now for fourth with Perez closing in within DRS zone within that second. Then comes Leclerc. Norris still behind him in seventh. Piastri rounding out the point scorers in eighth. Joe Guanyu, the home hero, doing a sterling effort so far, holding on to P9, but at the moment that won't be rewarded with a point. Russell rounds out the top ten. Outside of that top ten, it's Magnussen, Bottas, Ricardo, Stroll, Hulkenberg, the top 15, Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda, Albon and Sargent, the 20 drivers that all remain in this race. Closest gaps right now are around about six tenths of a second, but the battle for fourth between Sainz and Perez and the battle for sixth between Leclerc and Norris. So the two Ferraris in the field are currently having to do a bit more defending than they'd like, having to get their elbows out. Signs fighting Perez, Leclerc fighting a recovering Norris. What's the mentality going to be like, Sam, for, for Lando Norris, having been edged out wide in the lead going into turn one, now trying to carve his way back through the field in seventh? Yeah, I think he'll be really kicking, kicking himself at the end of this race, thinking that was a, a missed opportunity to get another bit of silverware uh, in his trophy cabinet. But now it's a case of learning and understanding, collecting data for tomorrow's big race, for the main Grand Prix. You know, OK, he'll bring home a couple of points today, which is, of course, valuable for the team. But now it's about, right, how, how can we improve the race car ready for tomorrow what what can we learn what's the tire life like it looks like at the moment everybody as i've said is tiptoeing around it also looks extremely difficult to get close to another car and then to overtake even though we've got this long straight and we've got drs nobody's really threatening down this main straight no little lock up for leclerc on the front right of his ferrari at the end of that back straight going into the right hander of 14 as he 
looks to keep Norris behind. This is the sound of the Monegasque now making his way down the main straight up into eighth gear before he eases on to the brakes at the 50 meter braking board into that long double right hander and actually gets a big kick on the steering wheel. The rear end stips, sticks out. He manages to correct it, but the lack of grip there, Sam, just so obvious from riding on board with Leclerc. My Ferrari used to do that at that corner as well. And at, what, at, <laughs> at that moment, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, oh, I've got another two hours of this in the, in the way. Um, no, it's such a tricky corner. I mean, the car is so loaded for so long. Just think that the the external tyre temperature that by that point is screaming at you, telling you, I've had enough punishment, I'm going to give up any minute. And it does. So very, very tricky corner, turn one. Further up front, after initially uh, seeming to not really be able to challenge the, uh, the front two drivers at least leads Alonso. Max Verstappen is now closing in on uh, Fernando Alonso for second place in this race. Around about half a second splits the Dutchman who is behind the Spaniard at the moment. We've just caught a replay from a little turn one incident involving Valtteri Bottas who's lost uh, part of uh, his front wing end plate. He's down in 12th at the moment but with DRS now Verstappen all over the back of Alonso moves to the inside down the back straight later on the brakes and it's a nice easy move for Verstappen who slides that Red Bull up the inside and takes second spot in this sprint. Next up on lap 7 of 19 Lewis Hamilton as he crosses the line for lap 8 of 19 this is Verstappen now starting to cut back through Sam. It seems like he's been able to get those medium compound tyres in a decent window now. Let's watch his hands through turn 1. A lot more stable than the Ferrari was through 1 and down in to two. We said that the, the Red Bull takes a little bit longer to get its ties in a window. This thing won't turn in a low speed. As Hamilton saying, his car won't turn in low speed corners. So not too happy out there as Hamilton. I'm afraid the writing's on the wall here. There's 11 laps to go. Max Verstappen is, well, about the second and a half, just over behind Lewis Hamilton and I can't see a way he doesn't win this race from here, uh, with Hamilton complaining about the handling of this Mercedes, which was already looking uncompetitive yesterday. Let's see if Hamilton can hold him off. Closing. 1.6 seconds the gap currently Hamilton has over Max Verstappen then it's Fernando Alonso Sainz is fourth in front of Perez who rounds out the top five Leclerc, Norris, Piastri are the top eight those are your point scorers points awarded down to eighth place in the sprint races Joe currently ninth Russell closing in on the Chinese driver in tenth Magnussen, Bottas, Ricardo, Stroll Hulkenberg the top 15 Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda, Albon and Sargent the two Williams cars land at the back of this pack. All 20 cars still in this race and after a bit of a slower start from Verstappen struggling to cut his way through the field, he's now found his rhythm, got his tyres up to speed, the battery pack is full and he has the DRS, the rear wing open down the main straight and is now closing in on the leader of the sprint race, Lewis Hamilton into turn one we go through the right hander, half a second between Verstappen and Hamilton and the Mercedes of Hamilton is is just struggling for grip, trying to turn his car into the right-hander. Verstappen just looks so much more confident in his Red Bull, so much more bullish compared to Hamilton, closing up through the corners into turn six. The right-hander again closes up. It's only a matter of time, Sam. It is indeed. Lewis actually made a big mistake at the end of the long straight into the hairpin, went deep, nearly ran off the circuit. That allowed Max Verstappen to close right onto the back of him. Now it's like he smelt blood in the water and he's coming hunting. The other Mercedes further back of Russell has just made a move for ninth and got himself in front of Joe Guan Yu. Uh, further back as well, Stroll and the Aston Martin has just taken 14th place away from Esteban Ocon, who now goes down into 15th spot. Here's Hamilton on the radio. Yeah, so the Stafford car behind, uh, 41-1. Leave me to it, man. I can see him. 
Hamilton wants to be left to it. He knows who the man behind him is. Onto the back straight. The longest straight, one of them in Formula One with DRS open for the reigning champion. The Dutchman closes up behind Hamilton, who moves slightly to the middle of the racetrack, but it's not a match to stop Verstappen sliding down the inside. And on the exit, Verstappen takes the lead of the sprint race on lap nine of 19. It's the Dutchman back up in front. He started down in fourth. And as he crosses the line for lap 10, with 10 laps to go, Verstappen leads Hamilton in second, Alonso third, Sainz fourth, Perez the top five. I think we, uh, we expected that to happen today. It's taken a little bit longer than we thought, but the inevitable has happened. The grip level that Max Verstappen has got now just looks... If you were on a simulator and you asked your, your simulator engineer to give you 1% to 2% more track grip than you had on a previous run, that's what it looks like on board when you watch the Verstappen Red Bull versus the Lewis Mercedes. This is the mistake I was on about, Harry. Lewis just locks the front, just runs a little bit deeper the hairpin. The overtake started the lap before with this mistake from Lewis because that allowed Max Verstappen into DRS range and we know how good that Red Bull is in a straight line. It's not just brilliant in the corners, it's not just Max Verstappen's extreme talent, it's also the fact that it's so efficient in a straight line. Verstappen in a class of his own once again now has a 1.7 second gap over Hamilton Alonso for third is now coming under pressure he's got signs Perez Leclerc Norris and Piastri as well all in a bit of a queue forming up behind him to try and take that third place away they've all got DRS but it's kind of forming a little bit of a DRS train and for everybody behind signs uh, who is keeping Perez at bay the Mexican just had a little look down the inside at the end of the back straight not close enough on that occasion Leclerc in sixth, Norris seventh, Piastri rounds out the top eight. This is the sound of Sergio Perez making his way up through the gears, getting towards 300 kilometers an hour and exceeding that before he makes his way into the right-hander of turn one. Alonso doing his best to hold on to that third place, but while these cars all battle behind, it's allowing Hamilton in second a little bit of a reprieve to try and hang on to those crucial points for Hamilton. Indeed, all, all season long, Hamilton has only uh, 20, 10 points to his name. The worst start to Lewis Hamilton's career in Formula One this season eclipses that 2009 season. So he'll be doing everything he can to hold on to that second and squeeze a few more points out of it. But Alonso keeping the rest of them behind in that battle for third for the time being. Well, you've got Hamilton and Alonso second and third. I think they're outperforming their cars and, and out of position from where they should be to be honest. You've got Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc behind trying to chase them down and obviously Lando Norris out of position from his pole position starting point. If, if Lewis and Fernando can finish on the podium today, I think it would be a brilliant achievement from both of them considering they are holding back faster cars behind. Verstappen currently leads the way. The man who has won four of the last five sprint races looking to add another one into the books. Three seconds now, the gap he has over Hamilton. Then comes Alonso, who is keeping signs. Perez, Leclerc, Norris, all that day behind him. Signs having to look in his mirrors down the main straight. Perez with DRS, but Leclerc's got DRS as well. But nobody making any huge gains on the straights. Actually, Signs running a little bit wide through turn one. That allows Perez to tuck in closely underneath. The difference of lines displayed through turns one and two. Was that a mistake by Signs or just a different kind of line he's taking? Sam? No, different kind of line. What you sometimes tend to find in turn one and also the long right hander onto the back straight. Always oh, Signs locks up the front right again into the hairpin. You you tend to find the if you've got cars running in close proximity, one might go wide, one might go narrow. That's to try and get better airflow for better aerodynamic efficiency through the corner. Well, at the moment, 
Steins holding on to that fourth place for dear life. Had a big lockup going into the right hander of turn six. That allowed Perez a sniff, but he couldn't make it work. Leclerc has tucked him right behind, and they're bringing Lando Norris along too. So this is a really close fight. You've got Alonso hanging on with Sainz, um, Perez, Leclerc, and Norris all in line of stern behind him. I think Alonso's hopes of hanging on to third depend on Sainz being able to fend off Perez. Uh, for fourth at the moment. It's, um, it's it's very unlike the battle at the front. This is very hard to predict. Well, Alonso gets a really good run out of turn 13 down the back straight. And that is just enough at the moment, even with the cars behind, with DRS to keep them behind. Sainz isn't able to make huge inroads, even with that drag reduction system. Perez gets close, but never far enough alongside to show his nose to Carlos Sainz. The same behind with Charles Leclerc. This, the battle for the final spot on the sprint podium. Alonso holds third, but just behind is the Ferrari of Sainz. Then it's the Red Bull of Perez. Then it's the other Ferrari of Leclerc and our race leader for half a corner, Lando Norris in the McLaren down in seventh. Concertine is up through the exit of turn two through three. Sainz desperately trying to find a way past Fernando Alonso. Perez desperately trying to find a way past Carlos Sainz, but no movers and shakers. They get oh so close but not close enough. I, I'm concerned at just how quickly Verstappen has disappeared from Lewis Hamilton and the chasing pack. He's now five seconds clear. Uh, watching this race, Harry, the grip level just looks so low. Everybody's just tiptoeing around this track. I also think that has played into Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso's game plan a little bit here. They're so good, these two. They're, they've got great feel, great touch. And I think that that feel and touch is helping them in this quest for the podium today. That was the voice of the McLaren Formula E driver, Sam Bird, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin, is also the BBC F1 correspondent, Andrew Benson. You're listening to live coverage of the first sprint race of the year in the 2024 Formula One season in China. Formula One returns to the Shanghai International Circuit after five years. Here's Charles Leclerc in six. Okay, copy. We are checking. So that's Leclerc down in six saying he has some D-rating and the uh, Ferrari are checking. Sam, what could that be, D-rating? So basically when the battery unit gets too hot, you then don't extract the maximum power from it. You're not harvesting enough and then you're not deploying the full amount because it's saying, I'm too hot, I'm not going to give you full power. Well, currently down in sick, trying to find a way past Perez. This is the closest battle on track. It's the battle for third between Alonso, Sainz, Perez, Leclerc. All squabbling over the same bit of tarmac. Verstappen started this sprint race down in fourth, and once he was able to get his tyres up to temperature, it was only a matter of time before he picked off Alonso. Then he picked off Hamilton, and now he is away in the lead. 5.8 seconds to gap. Hamilton holding on to second, and Alonso clinging on to third. Sainz, Perez, the top five. Leclerc, Norris, Piastri, the top eight. Those are your point scorers in a sprint race. Then it's Russell and Joe Guanyu, the home hero who runs at the top 10. Magnussen is 11th. They've run to Bottas, Ricardo, Stroll, Ocon, the top 15. Gasly, Sonoda, Albon, Hulkenberg down in uh, 19th. Sargent down in 20th and they're having a fierce battle at the back of the pack between Albon in the Williams and the Haas of Hülkenberg. It's not over much, it's only over 18, it's no points but it's certainly pride between those two teams. Albon winning out on that occasion in the run-in to turn one. We're running out of lap time then for this fight for P3 and Leclerc making a move on Perez who has to defend that inside line at the end of the back straight. He does so but Leclerc making that move to try and force Perez into a mistake. He holds on with five laps to go. Perez still fifth. Leclerc in sixth as he now runs down towards turn one on the main straight. Signs taking that traditional wider line through turn one, still all over the back of his Spanish compatriot, Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin in third. It's Aston Martin third, Ferrari fourth, Red Bull fifth in that battle as it currently stands on lap 15 of 19. I don't know whether Alonso is going to do the same as he did in Brazil last year, but this is this has echoes of that fight he had with Perez. His Perez. 
That's Perez on the radio saying, I don't have any traction. He's desperately trying to keep with signs in front, but he's got Leclerc, who was really starting to show a little bit more nose down the inside of Perez's Red Bull in the last few corners. The battle for third for the F1 sprint is on in China. Alonso, Sainz, Perez, Leclerc all doing battle. At the moment, it's the wily old fox, the man with the most experience in Formula One. In fact, the last time we were racing in China, Fernando Alonso had actually retired. He's back now in the Aston Martin and will be here to stay until at least 2026 after extending his stay at Aston Martin and showing us all that he's still very much got it. Putting his car in all the right places, keeping Sainz, Perez and Leclerc at bay. Onto the back straight we go. Leclerc is all over the back of Sergio Perez in the Red Bull, both with DRS. Perez is forced to move to the inside. Leclerc will have to do it. The long way round. Slight lock up from Leclerc who's forced round the outside. Perez holds firm and keeps that Red Bull as wide as he can as they now make their way back on to the start finish straight to begin lap 17. Fernando Alonso is very, very strong compared to the Ferraris through the long right-hander onto the back straight. He's just able to gap Carlos Sainz in that area and Carlos, even with DRS, just isn't even close enough to, to have a sniff under braking at the end of the straight. So Fernando right now is putting his car in all the right places. I think Lando Norris is going to be very disappointed at the end of this race. Also, they've gone high downforce for this race. All sides is making a move into the right-hander of turn six, gets right alongside the Aston Martin of Alonso, who has very difficult traction on exit. Sides alongside through the first of the left-hand sweepers. Sides round the outside of the Aston Martin. There's nearly wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. The right-hander beckons. Sides makes the move, but Alonso dives down the inside. Is there going to be contact? They touch. They both run wide. Perez goes through. Perez up into third. Alonso fourth. Sides fifth. Sides trying to make a move. That once again down the inside of Alonso, who looks like his tyres are screaming enough. Leclerc makes it through as well. Alonso in the space of four corners drops from third to sixth. Perez third. Sides fourth. Leclerc fifth. Alonso sixth. It's the kind of thing that happens in Formula E. You lose one place and you, lo you lose three or four. That's just as... Leclerc's making a move on signs. The two Ferraris wheel to wheel. Leclerc around the outside at the end of the back straight, but they both run wide. There is such little grip. Leclerc forced to take to the runoff. He slots in behind signs as they make their way through the final corner. The left hand of the rear of that Ferrari sliding around the final corner with DRS though. Leclerc closing in. Norris is right behind as well, but is it making massive Alonso inroads? Alonso in the pits. Alonso Alonso's the pit. pitted. Alonso's got into the pits. His tyres are screened enough. Alonso falls out of the points. His race is done in this sprint as Leclerc gets in front of Sainz. Alonso, front right puncture. That was his issue. He's gone. Lap 17 of 19. Perez in third. Leclerc just made the move in front of Sainz for fourth. Sainz fifth. Norris sixth. Piastri seventh. And it's Russell who gets, at the moment, the final point in eighth. That really all kicked off quickly, didn't it? And this is the sound of where it all began into the right-hander of turn six. Signs close right up to Alonso. Managed to get better traction on the exit. Side by side through the first of the long sweeping corners. The left-hander of seven. There was contact. Front right tyre of Alonso to front left tyre of Signs, And is that where he got the puncture? But then coming into the first of the left-handers of turn nine. Alonso dived down the inside of Signs. They both were forced wide and off the track. That allowed Perez to scoot through. And then it was misery there from Alonso who slid down the order before coming into the pits at the end of the lap. And that was all in the space of about five corners. I mean, we'd waited 15, 16 laps for something fun and interesting to happen in that race. And we got it all within the space of about seven or eight corners, didn't we? What the f***?
I think a lot of people are echoing those sentiments. Uh, Charles Leclerc, who is currently now in fourth, and he got very close with his teammate Sainz as well. In fact, there might even have been a little bit of contact between those two. Leclerc now in front of Sainz. This is the sound of Lando Norris chasing Carlos Sainz as they came into the braking zone for turn one. It almost looked like a bit of carbon fiber came off of the rear end of that Ferrari. Norris all over the back of Sainz for fifth now. It's all gone a bit pear-shaped for the Spaniard. I think what we've been hearing is that um, that radio message from Leclerc, I think, was about his attitude towards the way Sainz was behaving towards him. Sainz was being very, very aggressive in defence towards Leclerc in, in the immediate aftermath of that Perez Alonso, Sainz, Leclerc shenanigans. And um, I didn't actually see on camera how Leclerc got past Sainz, Harry. I don't know whether you did, but I think he wasn't happy with his teammate. Well, I, I, absolutely. I think that's where it's coming from. And I think that unhappiness is Alonso is told to retire. He's back into the pits on lap 18 of 19. It got very close between the two Ferraris at the end of the back straight. And we're just actually getting another look at it now, Sam. Leclerc on the outside, Sainz on the inside. And there was contact, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Was that Sainz just making an error or was it him being a little bit too aggressive? Leclerc did get through on the inside coming into turn one the following lap. I think the fact that they're both pushing the limits of adhesion under braking at the end of the long straight, uh, it, it's a tricky one. I don't think that Carlos Sainz did that deliberately, no. I think that they both just tried to break super late and it is so little, there's so little grip available out there on this Shanghai circuit that he's just missed the apex. I, I don't think that there was anything malicious in that move. Final lap then of the sprint race, the first of six in this, the longest season of Formula One. Verstappen leads by 12 seconds, Lewis Hamilton in second, Perez in third, Leclerc now fourth, having finally got through on his teammate after a squabble that absolutely kicked off in the last couple of laps between Leclerc, Sainz, Norris and Alonso. Alonso sustaining a puncture, had to come into the pits, has since retired. That allowed Perez and Leclerc through. Sainz is now on the back foot. He's fallen down to fifth and he's got Lando Norris who remember Norris in that McLaren started this race on pole position before being edged out wide into turn one by Hamilton and that forced him into the runoff area where he fell down through the field trying to make a comeback and he's all over the back of Carlos Sainz who just has to hold on for a few more corners in his Ferrari to try and take home P5 less points on offer for the sprint race only the top eight get points and right now it is the full eight going towards Max Verstappen who has won four of the last five sprint races that he has taken part in that we have seen in Formula One another faultless drive a cut through the field from fourth Max Verstappen wins the first sprint of the year in China the applause beckons from the Red Bull garage. Verstappen takes the win by 13 seconds, but Lewis Hamilton will be elated to come home P2 in a Mercedes that is struggling and is off the pace in normal conditions. He started on the front row of the grid. He manages to hold on to P2. Perez makes it two Red Bulls on the sprint podium coming home in third. Leclerc four. Sainz does hold on in front of Norris to take fifth. Norris sixth. Piastri 7th and George Russell who started this race the only man to start it on the soft compound attire takes the final point in 8th just in front of the home hero Joe Guan Yu who comes home ninth. Kevin Magnussen the top 10 then Ricardo finishes 11th here's Verstappen on the radio good job folks can take clean yeah that's good good race son. yeah well done Max another sprint win and uh, really good data for tomorrow Max Verstappen's eighth sprint win in his career. And that was quite right, Sam. Clean and clinical in the end from Verstappen. Clean and clinical. You know, the 19-lap stint on the medium compound tyre. And he was still able to lap within one second of his best lap time on the last lap. And he's the only person that can say that. Everybody else fell away a lot, lot more during that race. Hamilton did hold on to P2 in the end. Perez managed to win that squabble 
that really kicked off in that, those last couple of laps. I mean, now we have a bit of time to breathe over it. Perez was the benefactor. It was almost a bit like um, uh, when Hamilton and Perez were fighting uh, with, uh, I can't remember the other car now, back in Silverstone a couple Leclerc. of years ago. Leclerc. Uh, and through on that occasion went Hamilton, and here he is. Nice work, Lewis. That's P2, mate. Yeah, great job, guys. Let's just keep pushing. That is his first top six finish in any race this season. That's, uh, considering we're talking about Sir Lewis Hamilton, that's that's very crazy. If it weren't for Carlos Sainz being quite feisty out there today, we wouldn't have had that excitement. The only reason why Perez has come third today and, and got on that podium and why the, 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 the order kind of shuffled itself was due to Carlos Sainz Carrying Fernando Alonso. I think if, if Perez had been that driver, maybe that the order would be a little bit different. I think that Carlos at the moment is showing quite a feisty, fiery side, and we, we like that. He's driving really well. Sergio, it, he's doing well, but uh, I think that Carlos set off a chain of events today that created the, the order that we see now. So is that you saying, even though ultimately for signs, it ended with fifth place behind his teammate. You'd rather see that, the, the, the push and the fight and the anger, than, than, than what Perez shows, which is not really any of that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course I do. Of course I do. I, you know, you, we, these guys are entertainers. We want to be entertained. And Carlos Sainz gave us that entertainment today. Okay, he scored less points today and he'll be disappointed, but he was fighting. He wanted that third place and then he wanted to get after Lewis Hamilton. I think that if he'd, if he'd been able to get our past Fernando Alonso earlier, he could have got after Lewis Hamilton. But Fernando Alonso being Fernando Alonso drove sublimely while he was in third. It, if Sergio Perez had been behind, I don't think we would have got that fight. A puncture in the end is what caused Alonso to retire from this race, the only retirement from the sprint. Um, word on Lando Norris, Sam, in the end, recovered to sixth. In the end, recovered to sixth, but the McLaren, I think, lacked a bit of pace today. I think that the direction that they went on setup ultimately didn't quite work out obviously the, the start was the most disappointing thing and that's something that they'll be looking at in the in the data room with the engineers in a little while well packed out grandstands to witness the first sprint of the year won by max verstappen by 13 seconds clean and clinical from the dutchman lewis hamilton gets his first top six finish in any race this season with a drive uh, to p2 perez rounding out the sprint podium leclerc in front of signs the top five norris piastri russell who did manage to get on to uh, eighth in the end uh, having started in 11th the only man who did manage to make 19 laps on that soft compound attire work joe granu ninth magnuson 10th outside of the top 10 ricardo was 11th in front of bottas who sustained a bit of front wing damage on lap one ocon 13th stroll gasly the top 15 sonoda 16th in front of albon Sargent and hulkenberg the last of the classified finishes in the Haas in 19th with one retirement in fernando alonso well we can hear from the winner of the F1 sprints in China, Max Verstappen, who's talking to Jessica Hawkins. Max, congratulations. That's another win in the sprint race here on the Saturday of China. Just talk us through those first few laps. Yeah, the first few laps were uh, they were quite hectic. Um, you know, they were pushing quite hard up front. And then, of course, I had Carlos behind with new tyres, so uh, it was very difficult to keep him behind initially. But then... In a bit, we uh, we became stronger, and also I felt a bit more comfortable with the, uh, with the balance of the car as well, and I could look after my tires. So uh, very very pleased with that, and um, yeah, it's of course um, yeah very. They're just switching microphones due to some technical issues at the moment, which you might just have heard. Oh, here's Verstappen again. How does that set you up for your race later? 
Yeah, I think uh, qualifying, of course, is important. You know, to get a to get again a good good starting position that will uh, help a lot in the first few laps. Um, and then, yeah, tomorrow again, I, I don't know. I mean, also the wind is changing a lot uh, every day, and that makes it quite quite difficult to drive. It seemed that you were also having some issues with your battery. Are you able to? Do you think that'll be fixed for later? Uh, well, it was only the first two laps. Once we we sorted it out, it was all okay again. Well, congratulations. Best of luck Thank later. You. Max Verstappen there, speaking to Aston Martin development driver Jessica Hawkins. Apologies for some of those technical issues you heard. Uh, some issues yes. with the microphones down on the ground. Here's Hamilton. Firstly, Thank seems you. like you have a lot of support here in China. It's great to see you back on the podium. Just t tell us how it feels to be back on the podium here in China. Ni hao. Um, crowd here. Every year I've come here, Team LH China have been so, so supportive. I love these guys. Every year I've been here. Um, yeah, that's the best result I've had in a long time. So, of course, I'm I'm super, super happy and, and grateful. Of course, we couldn't fight the Red Bulls today, but this is a huge step, a huge improvement, at least with the rain. I think that really helps naturally. Uh, the race was tough, and uh, obviously, if I was further back, would have struggled perhaps to progress. But um, I, found, I found out a lot about the car through this um, through this short stint of the race. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for tomorrow. The pace looked quite strong, um, aside from the Red Bulls, which are a little bit further in front. Um, but yeah, the pace seems strong. So how do you think that that sets you up for qualifying later and leading into the race tomorrow? Well, I still think we're, you know, we're, we're still not as quick, I think, on a single lap as obviously the Ferraris, the Red Bulls. I think the McLarens are ahead of us for sure, and possibly the Astons. So we're, you know, we're, we're probably very close maybe to the Astons, but we'll, we'll see today. So I don't anticipate we'll be fighting for the front row, but um, the fortunate thing is we can make some adjustments, so hopefully I can improve the car between the, in the next three hours and hopefully have a better qualifying session than we, uh, than we have had in the past. So. Well, congratulations, Lewis. Enjoy. Yes, yeah. Lewis Hamilton giving his thoughts, and let's hear from the P3 man in the end, which went the way of Red Bull's Sergio Perez. Very, very exciting last few laps. Just talk us through those manoeuvres on the last few laps with the incident. Yeah, it was really difficult to really get through through Carlos, through the through Fernando. Um, we were fighting, and obviously we all had a high degradation following each other. And uh, yeah, I, at, at some point I also had to defend from Charles into into 14 and uh, it worked well and then uh, I managed to get by uh, Fernando and Carlos and uh, they got a little bit too close and uh, I saw the opportunity went for it and uh, yeah we, we finished really close to, to Lewis. It was a great race congratulations and best of luck for qualifying Thank later. You. Jess Hawkins speaking to the top three from the first sprint race of the year won by Max Verstappen ahead of Lewis Hamilton and Sergio Perez. Uh, that's it from us for the time being. Uh, my thanks to BBC F1 correspondent Andrew Benson, to McLaren Formula E driver Sam Burr. We shall catch up with you ahead of qualifying for the Grand Prix. That is all the sprint race format done and dusted as the top three drivers are presented with their sprint medals. We now get into Grand Prix business and qualifying is first up. We'll be on air on Five Sports Extra from 5 to 8 in the morning ahead of the session, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, in the meantime, this has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live.